Our lead story tonight is about this number, $8.3 trillion. This is what China's local governments owe to their creditors, $8.3 trillion. This debt pile overshadows the GDP of many nations, from Japan to Germany, India, the United Kingdom and France, among the biggest economies in the world, but no match to China's mountain of debt. For years, investors have been worried about this debt, and somehow China has managed to survive it. But kicking the can down the road is not an option anymore. China is facing the perfect storm of debt. Loans are coming due at home, overseas defaults are growing, and China is under pressure to take a haircut on bad debts. So where is all of this going? Tonight, we'll put together the numbers and the trends to find out. And we'll start with China's debt troubles at home. That same $8.3 trillion pile of debt, it's at home. What kind of loans are these? This is borrowing by local governments. Loans that were taken off the books to fund infrastructure projects, to support the local economy. These loans have a special name. They're called Local Government Financing Vehicles, or LGFVs for short. And what are these LGFVs? They're special entities. They're created to enable off-the-books borrowing. I know it sounds dodgy, and it is by design. It was supposed to be this way. This method was invented in the 1990s. It's a way for local governments to dodge borrowing rules. Because Beijing had banned local administrations from raising money. So they started circumventing the official channels. And these special entities, or LGFVs, helped them do that. They enabled local governments to borrow from investors both inside China and outside. Now, over the years, local governments got used to the system. The LGFVs became their go-to source to raise cash. And soon, the borrowing got out of hand. Loans through LGFVs represent 48% of China's GDP. 48%. These loans are now as big as official government borrowings. Experts call this debt a black hole because they're off the books. So no one really knows the true extent of this problem. And $8.3 trillion is just one estimate. Some experts believe the actual figure is much higher. Either way, this is a problem that cannot be put off anymore. There are talks of a bailout. Some provinces are in financial distress in China. They're lobbying Beijing for a bailout, like the government of Guizhou. Guizhou is among the most indebted governments in China. This month, they sent out an SOS. Local officials published an article online, and I have some quotes from what they published. Due to limited financial resources, it is extremely difficult to advance debt relief work. And it is impossible to effectively solve the debt problem by relying on the local government's own ability. The survey found that debt has become a major and urgent problem facing local governments in the province. This is what they posted online. Do you know what happened next? The post was deleted. Classic Chinese behavior. When officials see a problem, their default response is to cover up. But this is becoming too big and too widespread to hide. In December 2022, a local government was in trouble. It could not keep up with its loans. So it got a partial bailout from lenders. The terms of the loan were rejigged. Short-term loans were turned into long-term debts with lower interest rates and a repayment tenure of 20 years, which basically means lenders will now have to wait longer to get their money back. Because Beijing has refused to help. Beijing refuses to give a bailout to these local governments, and this message has come from the very top. Three months back, Chinese mouthpieces published this, and they quoted China's Ministry of Finance. I have that copy with me, too. Listen to what it says. China will deal with hidden outstanding local government debt in a law-based, market-oriented manner without resorting to central government bailouts. So no bailouts. That's the message from Beijing. The question is why? Why can't China bail out local governments? Because the Chinese state may also be running short of cash. All thanks to the Belt and Road Initiative, the pet project of President Xi Jinping. It has become the belt and road of bad loans. The project has come to a grinding halt. There's a string of bad debts. In the last three years, debts 
worth over $78 billion have failed. $78 billion of debts in BRI. These were loans given by Chinese institutions. They were for roads, railways, ports, airports and other infrastructure projects the world over. And what happened to these loans? They've either been written off or their terms have been renegotiated. And in both cases, the result is the same. China's money is stuck. What's worse, they're under pressure from global institutions. That's the third part of their problem. The likes of the World Bank and IMF, they're all asking China to forgive more debts, especially to poorer nations. And the most prominent case is that of Sri Lanka. Colombo recently got a bailout from the IMF. That's the International Monetary Fund. They're giving $3 billion to Sri Lanka. Last year, the Lankan economy collapsed. There were shortages of all kinds, from medicines to petrol. Protests rocked the country. A president and prime minister were ousted. India stepped up to help Sri Lanka, but China dragged its heels. It's one of the biggest creditors to Sri Lanka. So far, Beijing has refused to waive any loans. And now we know why. Because Beijing is being squeezed. On one side, you have local governments that are in distress, that want money. On the other side, you have overseas debts that are failing. So China, even with its very fat checkbook, cannot foot the bill for every default. Like I said before, this is the perfect storm. And Beijing is trying to avoid it. It may now be a matter of when and not if. One big default and China's debt bubble will burst. This contagion will be hard to contain. U.S. and Russia are dangerously close to an armed conflict. This year, 2023, New Delhi will be the capital of global diplomacy. For a country as diverse as ours, with 88% of the population illiterate, it was a very big deal to write a constitution, and that too, the world's largest. Meanwhile, if we may, there's a Republic Day gift from India for the BBC. A list of suggestions for the BBC for their upcoming documentaries. Number one, the Kohinoor and the colonial loot. Number two, an outdated monarchy and unhealthy obsession with the royals. Number three, racism in 2023. We're waiting.